Good afternoon, class. In today's video, what I thought I'd do is I'd go over a little bit of a trick that would help you to solve a scientific notation problem. So in this one, I thought I'd do um, something where there's fairly a good amount of messiness is probably the correct word to use. A bunch of messiness in, order, in terms of trying to solve this problem, trying to organize it to something that can actually be useful for you to be able to solve and use all of the tools and tricks that we've been taught over the past semester to actually handle these kind of problems. So let us begin. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a problem like this where, where you have like 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th, and I'm going to multiply that by 5.98 times 10 to the 24th, divide all of that by 6.4 times 10 to the 6th, and all of that is going to be squared. So how do you deal with something like this? This is where my trick comes in, and this is what I, I tried to do. I circled all of the decimal numbers in green, like so, and I circled all of the base 10 numbers, so 10 to whatever power it is, in blue, as you can see. And then my trick is really not so much of a mathematical trick, it's more of an organizational trick. And the reason why is because as long as you don't cross this fraction bar, Multiplication means order doesn't matter. I can put 5.98 times 6.67 and it doesn't, or 6.67 times 5.98 and they're the exact same thing. So for this trick, what I did was I took all of the green circles and I put them right over here, all on one side. And then you notice this big X that I have over here, that's again, organizational visual. It's to show you that there is a difference between this side of the, of the, of the expression and this side. And so I took all of the blue base 10 powers and put them over here. So with that, we can, hopefully this is starting to look a little bit cleaner or at least a little bit clearer on what, how to proceed. Because in this case, we would say, oh, this, all these base 10 powers follow the laws of exponents. So I can use that to help me out. For example, in the numerator, I have 10 to the negative 11th times 10 to the 24th. That's, that's law of exponents number one. So I would just add the two together. 24 minus 11 is 13, which is what I get over here. And then I look over here. 10 to the sixth quantity squared is the same as law number three on the, on the laws of exponents. So I would multiply. Six times two is 12, which is what I get over here. And then this fraction here, 10 to the 13th divided by 10 to the 12th, would be exactly the same as law number two. So I would take 10 to the 13th, the numerator, my, uh, take the exponent into the numerator, subtract it from the denominator, and, I, and 13 minus 12 is one. So I would stick that over here. And then all of this messiness, all of these terrible decimals here, they can all be dealt with because you have a calculator. So think about that, put that all into your calculator. Don't forget that there's that 6.4 over here got squared, so make sure that, that that square continues into this into this next step. Once you've done all that, you'll find your answer is 0.973 or 0.974. I'm, I'm rounding at this point because we're pretty much at our answer, times 10 to the first. However, this is not scientific notation. The reason why is because it is less than one. And according to the rules of scientific notation, we need to have a number between one, less, gr greater than or equal to one, and less than 10. So, I have to move the decimal point over, which means I need to reduce this, um, this uh, exponent by one. So I would now have 10 to the zeroth power, which is one, and we're, I don't need to write 10 times one anymore. So I'm just gonna leave it as is. And therefore my answer would get to be about 9.73. Now, if you're thinking this might, number might look familiar, in fact, these numbers look familiar, this is actually how one of the ways that we calculate gravitational acceleration here on Earth. So this is the universal gravitational constant, this is the mass of the Earth, and this is the radius of the Earth. Now, is this exactly accurate over every point of the Earth? No, of course not, because this is, this is the uh, radius of the Earth at the equator, which is very different depending on your uh, latitude. This mass is not always going to be um, exactly the same under your, under your feet in particular because there are some places on this planet where the Earth is just more dense. So there are some, going to be some variations, but this would be about the average. And of course, you know, if you use other numbers, you would get other numbers, other answers. So I thought I'd show, point that out a little bit of a 
little tidbit for you to consider. So this is my little trick for solving scientific notation um, problems. So that concludes this video on this trick. Good luck in your studies, and I'll see you in the next one.